I mean, for the price, it seems pretty nice. My biggest fear though is like, is this island just going to disappear? <laughs> I mean, it doesn't look like it would take much for you to be cut off, have your little bunkie cut off from the mainland. <laughs> What is up, YouTube? Matt McKeever here, and in today's episode of Deal Destruction, I'm joined by, well, I'm actually not joined by anyone because no one's been signing up to participate in Deal Destruction. You guys all comment on how you love it when we post a new episode, but no one's signing up to actually share deals that I can go and evaluate. So, uh, I mean, I'm just gonna do a random search on realtor.ca today, hang out with you guys. Um, I guess, I'll just loop you in. I've been thinking about buying an island. So I figured let's just uh, go island shopping together because no one else wants to uh, look at properties with me or get my analysis. So um, let's see what's going on in the Muskokas. So yeah, anyways, I've been thinking about and just kind of addicted to this whole idea of buying like an island. Um, so I'm not saying that I'm definitely buying an island, but I'm not saying I'm not buying an island either. But I definitely would like a cottage at a minimum. So let's zoom out of London, Ontario, because there's not many cottages there. And let's head up to the Muskokas and see what's up. And uh, I figured I would just kind of share with you guys my thoughts and general analysis while I look for uh, some cool cottages or islands to buy. Um, right now, I think that my criteria primarily is just looking for something cool that can you know sleep a lot of people i would like at least the main cottage to be year round so four seasons and uh ideally something between half and 1.1 1.2 million dollars um depending upon the condition and then otherwise we just want to make sure it's waterfront because i mean if it's not waterfront what's the point so let's go waterfront and uh yeah i guess we'll uh see what's in the market. So um, one of the things that's interesting, I guess, about these commercial prop or about these uh, uh, cottages and price or properties like that is simply the fact that a lot of the owners will have owned it for an extended period of time. And because of that, they'll often be sitting on significant equity. So there are some really cool opportunities for VTBs. And if you guys didn't realize that, my buddy Kyle Ford has actually documented it multiple times on my YouTube channel. So you guys can always jump back and check out those uh, videos with Kyle where we break down exactly how he goes about uh, you know, getting VTBs from cottage owners. But a big part of it has to do with capital gains and trying to minimize the capital gains burden for them. So right now I'm pretty open. I don't know a lot about this. Um, you know, I've got friends and family that have some cottages up around here. I think this is, if that's Skeleton Lake or wherever Skeleton Lake is, they're up around there. So that's super cool. Um, so I've got really fond memories growing up, uh, going to those cottages. So I've always wanted a cottage of my own on that waterfront. And uh, I mean, now feels like the time. I also have a sneaking suspicion that uh, a lot of vacation properties and vacation rentals are really going to pick up momentum. Um, and we're going to see a lot of increased demand in that regards um, over the coming years, especially just, I think consumption patterns and travel habits are going to change dramatically because of COVID-19. And uh, because of that factor, I expect that, uh, you know, there's some potentially interesting upside with some of these properties. So right now I don't really have a system in place. I'm just kind of uh, randomly choosing a few to look at with you guys based upon the photos and uh, the price point. So we'll just select a handful and then I'll kind of uh, talk through my thoughts, I guess. Do you guys own any islands? If anyone's got any island buying tips, jump in that comment section, hit me up because uh, I'm always open to your tips, especially when I'm moving into niches that I'm not necessarily familiar with. Looks like we got another island there. And do you guys even know much about owning islands? I actually haven't done much research at all. Um, really my key criteria are, I want it to be uh, four seasons year round. So I'm not even sure how that would work um, because I'm sure some of these cottages probably get 
like water or ice locked in the winter. Um, so again, I have no idea. I'm eventually going to just have to reach out to some local experts and get some perspective there. Um, and the other thing is internet. I may not need a lot of things, but I really do need a good internet connection. So I'm pretty sure you can get satellite internet connections anywhere. And I think they're supposed to be pretty good these days, but I don't actually know for sure. So um, those are really my big criteria. If you guys have any experience, jump in that comment section down below because uh, I could definitely use all the tips. All right, let's check out this first batch and see if there's anything worth diving deeper on. So what do we got? Located directly lakeside with long lake views and sunset vista, stunning self-contained private cottage, boasts vaulted ceilings and combination eat-in kitchen and living room with large sliding glass doors opening into a spacious screened-in Muskoka room and contemporary neutral tones throughout. This three-bedroom cottage has full four-piece bath, large master bedroom with walkout to porch and two-piece ensuite. Two parking spots are located or allocated to the cottage and one boat slip. All right, check it out. Oh, okay, so it's kind of on like a, must be like part of a group thing, a condo, a condo corporation year end. Interesting. All right, well, nothing really stood out there. I think that's a pass. Oh, this is almost the exact same one. So let's pass that. Let's see what's going on here. Welcome to Oakwood Cottage, traditional rustic cottage, sound private three acres. I like the acreage, so I do want some space. With gentle slope, 310 feet south shoreline, beautiful cottage, da, 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 five minute boat ride, closest marina, three bed, one bunkie and one three piece bath and one two piece bath and one compost toilet bath by the bunkie. Compact kitchen has island and is open to dining family room, two walkouts to the water. All right, sounds interesting. <laughs> Looks like you got a little bit of water on your roof there, bud. But like it, nice by the water, but it's kind of, um, it's not right on the same grade as the water. So it looks like a decent little incline there, which is good because I don't want my cottage getting flooded. All right. I feel like this one's going to be a little bit too small for me. I'm looking for something with a bit more of a wow factor. But there's a nice little inlet or cove it's on. Well, you got the nice little fire pit there. Keep from the wind blowing on it. Got nothing wrong with that one, but don't think that's quite the place for me. Let's see this one. Oh, I think I've looked at this one before. What do you guys think? This seems really close to the water. Do any of you guys know things about cottage? Is this like danger or is that normal? Because I love the idea of being that close to the water and like, all these decks and docks right on the water look pimp. But if I remember, if we go near the end of the photos here, my inner landlord was just like, Ugh, look at all that water right around it. You know, what's the, is there a risk that the, the lake could rise like a, a foot or two? And if so, is, do I lose my cottage? What's going on there? Will there be any insurance issues? Do you guys know, is there insurance issues if you buy a cottage right on the waterfront? Obviously, I can like contact my insurance company to find this out. This is a cool room though. I like that. That is very nice. It seems pretty neat though. Pretty, pretty neat. I forget, is this one actually on a lake or a river? Right beside Picnic Island. Okay, interesting. Actually, I really like how close it is to Barry and stuff. So that's one of my considerations as well. Like how far north do you really want to go? And uh, if I can stay south of Gravenhurst, that would be a huge bonus. Huh, that's interesting. What do you guys think? This is the first one that actually like interests me. So jump in the comment section, let me know. Do you like two island 780? Just moments from Marina by boat to this pretty little island in Honey Harbor close to the park landing docks. Main cottage has three bedrooms, open concept, living, dining, kitchen, and wraparound sun deck. Separate self-contained guest cottage has two more bedrooms and open concept, living, dining, eat-in kitchen. Good water depth at the dock and shallow sandy bottom for wading. 
enjoy awesome sunsets and sunrises. Da, da, da. Both cabins have been rented out periodically for 2000 and 1000 respectively. Cool. I mean, for the price, it seems pretty nice. My biggest fear, though, is like, is this island just going to disappear? <laughs> I mean, it doesn't look like it would take much for you to be cut off, have your little bunkie cut off from the mainland. Hey YouTube, are you guys looking to buy a rental property? If the answer is yes, then you need to pay close attention to the following information. Nitty Gritty Real Estate is a company that's here to help you buy a rental property in your market in as little as 30 days. Investors typically learn real estate by watching YouTube videos, joining Facebook groups, all kinds of different things, reading books. However, I see tons of people spend a lot of time and money and yet never end up taking action because they still don't know how to actually get started. Does this sound familiar? The best way to learn something is by actually doing it. And so Nitty Gritty's experienced team will actually walk you through the entire process of how to buy a property, rehab it, get it up and operational, and they'll even provide you with contacts if you need to uh, set up the real estate business, so if you need lawyers, accountants, things like that. But go to nittygrittyrealestate.com for additional information, and you can click the link in the video description down below to hop over. But again, they're really just here to help facilitate and get you launched into your real estate investing career and they'll give you a free consultation with no obligation whatsoever. So again, link to everything that we talked about is in the video description down below. Jump over and talk to Nate Gray Real Estate and why not get started today? I mean, for the price, it seems pretty nice. My biggest fear though is like, is this island just gonna disappear? <laughs> I mean, it doesn't look like it would take much for you to be cut off, have your little bunkie cut off from the mainland. So I don't know if that's a concern, not sure. Well, let's check out, oh, this is another one. Is this the same place or different? Looks different. This is number 850, it's similar spots. So again, this is another one where it's like right on the water, obviously a little bit higher up. It's kind of cool how like the deck um, goes out over the water though. Do you like that? And like, that looks cool. Fun. What should I know about when looking at buying a cottage? Have you guys bought a cottage before? Jump in the comment section. Give me all your tips and best practices because I definitely need them. This is outside of my wheelhouse. Looks cool though. Lots of little outbuildings. I really do like the idea of an island. The living space was a bit small, but again, if you're on your own island, I don't know if I care as much about the living space. Oh, this doesn't work. That's a condo thing. All right, let's do one more batch, see if we find anything else interesting. Hey, we could be analyzing multifamily real estate deals, but no one submitted multifamily real estate deals for me to analyze. So instead, I'm just going to look at cool cottages. And uh, I guess one thing I've been thinking about too is should I try and buy my dream cottage right away? I'm leaning towards no. I feel like I should buy one first, fix it up, flip it, get a feel for what I like and don't like, and then try and buy like my real forever cottage or island. But again, I'm open to perspective there. That looks pretty fancy. That one looks like it's a bit too close to the neighbors for me. That one looks like there's no water. Another island. Hmm, don't see a lot of like sandy beaches. one doesn't look like it's near the water at all, but let's check it out anyways. And so I guess just while I'm randomly looking at cottages here, uh, one of my thoughts is I'm very hopeful that I can get a partial VTB. So my thoughts are maybe you finance 50, 60% of the purchase price, try and get a second place VTB to come in at 10 to 25%, try and end up at a 
close to, you know, a 65 to 85% loan to value would be wonderful. All right, yeah, let's jump into these ones. So, oh, this is another condo thing. Lame. This looks cool though. Stunning Georgian Bay waterfront cottage. Oh, this poor guy had his cap lock stuck. With 318 feet of prime western waterfront exposure, rocky shallow shoreline, huge dock with deep draft. This cottage is 100 or 1100 square feet, three bedrooms, 1.5 bath, well appointed and features open concept. Actually sounds small. I thought it would have been a lot bigger looking at it there. Um, ooh, it's on five, four and a half acres though. I like that. Let's see, what are we looking at here? That looks cool. Got the water right there, built right into the rocks. Nice big deck. They've got a thing for pottery. Man, it looks a lot bigger on the, uh, oh, is that the realtor in the photo? Looks a lot bigger from the outside than it does on the inside. Yeah, no real wow factor there, Gary. Let's see this though. Colburn Lake, zero maintenance required. And this recently completed two plus one bed, two bath waterfront cottage. I guess the one thing I haven't mentioned yet is I'm definitely looking for the properties that have multiple buildings. I really like that idea. Just uh, super cool. That's a nice space. Super modern, super slick. Oh, cool. Kind of an unfinished basement there. A little bit more living space. Even though it's waterfront, it doesn't really feel like it. One's not bad, but oh, I think I might have looked at this one before too. So I like the concept of this. Like it looks kind of cool to have that sticking up on the high hill and all the rocks. But once I actually looked at it, it looked like I need to build, I need to like renovate all of it really fix it up and build some outbuildings. Seems like a bit of hassle for me. Kind of a picky buyer when it comes to cottages. Oh, where is this? Definitely not what I'm looking for. That is a hard pass. Tiny, where is tiny? Oh, cool. Oh, tiny. That's where Limor has her cottage. Right. That's why that's familiar. Cool. But yeah, that's not going to work for me. Well, this looks fancy, but is there any water? You tricking me? We said waterfront. Maybe crick front, but that's not waterfront. Yeah, that's, that looks beautiful, but where's my water at? It's not gonna cut it. All right, here's something. Locate okay, lakeside with open lake views and sunset vista, stunning five bedroom with vaulted ceilings and combo eating kitchen, living room with siding doors open into a screened in Muskoka room. The screened in Muskoka room is important to me or like some sort of big screened in uh, gazebo, something like that. Cottage was built for entertaining. They get me. Window spans the cottage with amazing water view, master bedroom with walkout to porch and two piece ensuite, two bedrooms on main level and four piece bath. Lower level with two bedrooms, walk out in four piece. Each room has lots of bright windows and waterfront views. One bedroom with siding doors to sitting area on waterfront could be changed to a family room, two allocate parking spots and one boat slip. Sand beach, tennis courts, laundry, da, da, da. 20 plus acres of forest, guest parking available. Okay, so this is like in a condo as well. 
don't think I like the idea of condos because condos tell you what to do. Oh, wow, there's a lot. This must be like a new condo corp, eh, that they put together and they're selling all the buildings. Well, it's kind of disappointing, guys. We haven't actually found anything that good. Do you guys want to see the one that like I'm secretly really thinking about? No one take it on me or else I'm going to be pissed. But I think this is the one that I've been thinking about a fair bit. It looks pretty cool. I might make Jeff Weibo drive up with me and go look at it. All right. So water access with parking close by. Totally turnkey if you want a cottage for the rest of the summer. 161 feet of frontage, one acre lot. Um, shore road allowances purchased 2020. Northwest exposure, cottage. Details, three bedrooms, one bath, serves up splendid views. It's well-maintained, summerside cottage, complete with updated kitchen, bathroom, new paint, new floors, new decks, women docking, da -da, two boat docks with summer toys, truly tree, da -da -da. I think this is the one. Maybe not though. No, I guess this isn't the one. There was one that had like a, a nice cottage, but then also had like a, dilapidated cottage on it as well. Maybe this is it. So like, I like this, like everything about it. Super cool. Couple of outbuildings. Yeah, and then it's got this like abandoned freaking cottage thing as well. Looks really rough, but if that's salvageable, that could be cool. Cause like, look at that design, right? Can you imagine if that was all glass, all fixed up? Well, that looks rough, eh? Hmm. But yeah, this is one that's on my short list, I think. Is there any others? Sometimes hard to tell what has potential here as well. What is that? This is only one bed, one bath. Which definitely is a little bit too small for my liking. Check out that guy too. All right, last round of cod shopping, then I'll wrap up. So we already checked out that guy. I mean, again, we could be looking at multifamily properties. No one sent me multifamily properties to look at. Like the deck. Little cottagey thing. Screened in gazebo. Another little building. A little bit more. I think it's going to be way too small, though. That's too bad. Cute little thing, but far too small. Where are you located, though? Well, I think I looked at this one before too, online, of course, but this one looked cool. Like that, that looks pretty pimp. I like that. that awesome bunky. Let's read the highlights again. Private island paradise, get away from it all with your private paradise, only 30 minutes north of Honey Harbor by boat, three bedroom, 1500 square foot, four season retreat, hey, four seasons, um, is beautifully finished and nestled into a wonderful and well-treated 1.1 acre, complemented by a well-built boathouse style bunky for those special guests. Deep water access, large dock, make this attractive, sheltered, safe harbor for any size boat. Da -da -da. They've got some strict COVID showing stuff. Yeah, that could be cool. I could get behind that. Anyways, that, I, I think that's it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed Matt McKeever randomly looking at cottages or islands to buy, but I hope on the next episode of Deal Destruction, someone will join me so I can go about maybe destroying their deals. Anyways, I appreciate you guys watching this video if you made it to the end. If you do have any cottage buying tips for me, what I need you to do is jump in that comment section down below, hit me up. Otherwise, I'll see you on the next video. Thanks guys.